What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the 740 Sports Show. I'm your host, Eric. I got Bub with me. You do. Bub, the NFL Week 1. Horrible. Disappointed. It disappointed. I hated every second of it. But things get better. And we're going to be looking ahead into Week 2. Yeah. Also going to be touching on OSU football and college football in Week Mm -hmm. 2. Um, and then some odds and ends. Jackson Ironman football, fantasy football, our yeah. bad beats this week. Some, there was no good beats. No, no, nothing good. No. Nothing good this weekend. But we're looking ahead. We're keeping it positive anyway. So go ahead and lace them up, strap them up, tie them up, do what you're going to do to get yourself ready for this episode of the 7 Floors Sports Show. Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the 740 Sports Show. Buzz, NFL Week 1. Mm-hmm. Is it everything you hoped it would be? Nope. Me either. Not at all. Me either. Obviously, um, both, both of our teams took took um, big L's. Yeah. To, to put it gently. Yeah, it was horrible it was to rough. watch. It was it was rough to be a Steelers fan in Week 1, and it was, it was rough to be a Bengals mm-hmm. fan in Week 1. Um, before Eight. we... Before we dive too far into week one, though, I do want to go ahead and congratulate the mayor of the 740 Sports Show. Oh, um, for the contract? Joe, Mr. Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Um, congratulations, sir, on um, on the bag. <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a contract. Um, the, the, uh, the, the kid from Athens is officially yeah. the highest paid player in NFL history. 279 mil, what, 219 guaranteed yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Um, astronomically high unbelievable um we, we we love it um congratulations again we saw the the, the athens shirt and the, the signing oh the yeah course. yeah that was really cool to see yeah, was awesome him representing so so, um, so so joe we love you as always <laughs> as always you're always welcome but we got to talk about week one yeah and so that let's was... start with it man let's start with the Bengals. I'll, yeah I'll just take pull my the lumps. band-aid off i'll take my lumps with pittsburgh afterwards and, and we'll move right down the checklist of of week one extravaganzas uh obviously i think we both expected a little more out of uh cincinnati headed the headed yeah had a lot one. higher expectations than headed. under 100 passing yards from joe burrow yeah yeah um uh just start to finish man uh just seemed to be just wasn't the day no it was gently. and like i said I, I feel like I've told people it was the perfect storm. Like yeah. the rain coming down. Yeah. The Browns, I'm I just keep saying they are set up to beat Cincinnati. Yeah. They just have their D line is very good. Their D B S are just as good. Yeah. And then their run game on offense, they control the ball. It's just what they do. And in a rainy game like that, it's gonna be hard to beat a team like that. Yeah. Well and, and like you said, Cleveland's been such a dynamic defense for so long and the oh, pass yeah. rush is just Oh, Miles Garrett's an Unstoppable. animal. Unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Miles Garrett. He gets he gets all the credit in the world, and still probably not enough. Yeah. I mean, what that guy does is just unreal. Um, and then just put obviously put a ton of stress on Cincinnati. Um, a, a lot of yeah from the from start. Cincinnati just from the job, it just didn't feel right. It, no, it never felt like Cincinnati was going to win that game. And when McPherson missed that field goal, it just kind of felt like he he was going to miss it. Um, just a lot of. A lot of flashbacks to week one of last year. And that's kind of what I was that's kind of where I was going to go for it, man. And and you and I talked before, you know, before we sat down here. I feel good about Cincinnati. You know, Cincinnati we both think is going to be just fine. It's yeah, not I'm not worry about I'm not there. panicking or anything. It's just yeah. I would like to see them play their players in preseason more. Yeah. Obviously I understand Joe had the injury, but yeah. you have receivers that are available just for anything getting the feel of the game back. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what happens when you don't. Yeah. Um, well, let me, let me, uh, you know, I don't want to shift gears too early from Cincinnati into Pittsburgh, but I know you're looking to get off of that topic. Yeah, there's really, possible. I mean, Nick, Nick Chubb's an animal. He yeah. runs the ball very well. Bengals defense forced two turnovers. So, I mean, other than that, there's really not much to talk about on the Cincinnati side. Just put it behind you and move on to week two. Yeah. Yeah. And I, actually, it's a great point though. Before we do, I guess, um, you know, what are, you know, the defense played well. Yeah, you know that was my big takeaway from. from yeah, Cam Britt Taylor that, felt everywhere. Yeah, the defensive line, Trey Hendrickson got a sack. He was applying pressure all day. Um, the linebacker Jermaine Pratt looked really good, especially in the first half. Yeah, he seemed like he was in on a lot of plays. So he got extended as well this offseason. Yeah, him, Logan right? Wilson, Trey Hendrickson. Yeah. So they're all set up for a few years left on their Bengals yeah. contracts. Yeah, 
Um, well, I didn't I didn't want to shift gears too early, but you said playing your season or your preseason and you know, playing yeah. players in preseason. Yes. Um, Pittsburgh did that this preseason. As a Pittsburgh guy, felt really great um, going into Week One. Well, yeah, five touchdowns on five drives for taking in the starters. Yeah. Coming out of preseason, you just had very high expectations for that offense. You thought they were going to find it with click. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we hope. Um, obviously. Anyone who watched that game or even just saw a score knows that that did not happen. No. Um, still, just not quite as much versatility in that offense as I was hoping to see. I don't think we're doing enough. To, um, I don't think there's enough dynamic. No, um, but to the. Calling. Yeah. I think it's very conservative. Mm-hmm. And I think we're just handcuffing players, man. And I, there's, that's what it feels yeah. like offensively. Defensively, I, I want to be upset. And there's times where I felt physicality wasn't there yeah. and, and I just didn't look prepared. But Brock Purdy the, looked the, funny. The 49ers didn't miss a beat didn't, from, the, didn't from the season miss. transition. So, so, like, I almost felt like because what I was watching – and I've been critical of Brock Purdy. Like, I haven't been on the – on tra- like, I yeah, you've been on the hype train. See, I wanted to watch it. And, and part of it was omission. Like, I hadn't sat and really, yeah. you know, looked at it. And I did, unfortunately, I did on Sunday. Yeah. And it was just, he diced Pittsburgh, man. He felt, a, he felt like he was five years in the league. Dude. The way, the, the transition from his week one to, or his year one to his year two, just that week, it just looked like he was, he matured a lot. Dude, it was, it was insane. It was, it was like watching, like you said, it was like watching year five Tom Brady. Like, yeah. it was just, he was clicking. In a, it was pre-snap, he was clicking. Yeah, he saw exactly. all of it. In his reads, he was doing everything right. He was checking down to the right receiver. Oh hell, Brandon I, Ayuk yeah, he out was, of his mind. Yeah, as he well. was going insane. Brandon Ayuk, two touchdowns. I don't know the receiving yards on him or anything, but yeah. I know he was. But I'm going to credit, him up. I'm going to credit that to Brock Purdy being so on point with everything, man. I mean, it was well, just yeah, complete control of the game. So and CMC right being able to run the ball so well. Yeah, I yeah. mean everything's opened up for him that game. Yeah, yeah, and their defense played outstanding too. So a little bit of credit to that defense. I just I want to see. Matt Canada's offense, man. I just I got yeah. see it, it is what it is. It always has been. But I I believe Tomlin was a little critical of him. Oh, I haven't seen um, this much yet. I haven't seen a whole bunch of it, so I'm not really sure. But that's just kind of what I heard. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to look into that more. Yeah. And troll Steelers fans. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of trolling, Rob probably hasn't given us what we've deserved. Rob as hasn't as, been on here in as two far months. As, as far as <laughs> Is Rob gets a tough time about being a Cowboys fan. Man. Yeah, he does. Well, he does. He does. Well deserved. No, yeah, he I brings mean, it on himself. When you're a fire hydrant rooting for a team out of Texas, like you know, it just it doesn't make any sense. But yeah. nonetheless, um, well deserved. But his Cowboys, dude. Yeah, they look good. Three facets of the game dominant. And three facets. Well, they did of the force game. five fumbles or something like that. I, I believe so. Like Seven sacks. Oh, it was insane. <laughs> I, mean, it was I turned it off at half. That was a. I, I did not want to watch it anymore. Because I watched my favorite team get beat up, and it was nice to see somebody else get beat up, even if it wasn't Rob's team. So. I bet against the Cowboys. <laughs> oh. Yep. Oh. That's why I went to bed at half. I was hoping for a miracle, and it just got worse. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Mike is an animal, though. Yeah, dude. I mean, just. Still hate Trayvon Diggs, yeah. even though he forced a fumble for, or an interception, I yeah. guess, technically. That yeah. was a hell of a hit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just they did, man. Start to finish, they looked. I mean, special teams, the the, the blocked kick into a touchdown. I think. Yeah, that kind of just set the that set the whole tone, right? Like, oh yeah, that just okay. We're here. To Ten point swing everywhere. Yeah. Um, Mike McCarthy, I didn't realize was calling plays again until I was. Yeah, I, I heard that at the start ball. of the game. Um, I felt like there was a little bit of fluidity and a little bit of continuity in that offense. Things started clicking a little bit. I'm let's, not going to pretend yeah, the defense let's wait and didn't see. dominate Yeah, the defense. The game. That's all that needs that's to be not, talked about. In yes, game. absolutely. Well, special teams, too. Yeah. But, but I, I saw I saw moments from, from Dak. Uh, CD looked good. Um, I just... I, Yes. I, wanted to, I just wanted to acknowledge that was there Dak any comfortable. Was there any Deuce Vaughn in the second half at all? Deuce there, Vaughn played in the second half. I really need to go I mean, back and watch Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, I don't. He's I don't about the only him. interesting cowboy other than Micah. As far as, you know. As far I, as favorites. That I like to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with it. Um, I just, I wasn't necessarily anticipating a 40-point blowout in that game. You know? No. And the Cowboys arguably looked as well-prepared as anybody. Um, I yeah, they looked Miami very looked well. very well-prepared. 
offensively. I, yeah, yeah. I thought um, I thought Jacksonville looked pretty decent at times. Um, Who did they open up against? Oh shoot! I just I it's not coming to me at the top of my laps, head. Man. Yeah. Why are you gonna go and do this, man? You're gonna have to edit. So anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, Jacksonville, did yeah. you figure out who they played yet? Nope. Okay, well, we're moving on then. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they did look good. Uh, Calvin Ridley seemed to fall right in place with that offense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he got the first touchdown of the game, right? Yeah, yeah. Or at least for the Jaguars. I can't remember yeah, how the scoring he, went. He did for Jacksonville, um, but uh, he looked good. That was that was nice to see. Um, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, he looked good. Looked, looked good. Um, he just he looked poised. You know what I mean? He yeah. Looked, looked Trying to he yeah he looked he looked fine yeah he didn't he didn't, didn't look make or break flashy, yeah didn't make or break that game but um you know I, I'm I'm hoping that Calvin Ridley does yeah give him that weapon that he needs to take that jump that we've talked about um, well for your fantasy team's sake yes absolutely um which uh, I also have Tyree Hill in fantasy yeah trusty GM Bub uh, did did wonders and uh, snagged Tyreek. So uh, thanks, GM Bub, on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a uh, steal. Um, yeah, it was. Um, uh, speaking of uh, victories, I guess for the week though, uh, I did take a victory over Trey overall. Oh yeah, you whooped him. Football. Yeah, Trey got. It was yeah, he got. Yeah, it was convincing. He got annihilated. Yeah, um, it was convincing. I was feeding it to him last night. Oh, he was Trey. getting tired of me saying it. <laughs> was he? Was yeah, he? so that's why I'm doing it again in this. Yeah, um, well, to make matters worse, he uh, he had Aaron Rodgers in last night's game as well. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. when I started feeding it to yeah. him. Um, it wasn't going to impact the outcome of our game, but um, for, yeah, for, for Trey this season. It, yeah, which it sucks will. for the Jets. Yes, rough for the Jets. What, um, three plays and then three and out, as yeah. they say. Yeah, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, man, torn Achilles. Um, I thought I you were going to laugh at that. You're not funny. I know. Um, but Aaron Rodgers, man, speaking of things that aren't funny, torn Achilles. Yeah. Um, I hope that's not it, man. I really do. No, I, it was just. I said it's not funny. I Why know. Yeah. <laughs> just the fact that it was three plays in, and then they panned to the Jets owner in the box. I was just like, man, that guy has to feel like yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. It just sucks. Like, what do you? Yeah. I mean, I go back to Zach Wilson. Yeah, which, I mean, he didn't look bad. No, he didn't look bad. I mean, he got the job done, man. I yeah, mean, at the end of the day, he won. In, coming into the game, I mean, it, like, I, don't, I was watching the Manning cast at the time, so, like, they were so baffled. They had not prepared for Zach Wilson. At oh, all. yeah. So, oh. like, seriously, I mean this, to come off the bench and get a get a win against the Josh Allen mm -hmm. team that was in the AFC champion, or AFC, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, they're AFC a very champion. highly touted team coming into the season. Yeah, absolutely. So, um. You know, so to be able to come in and get that win, man, great. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't know, you know, what that means for the Jets going forward. All I know is the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Bengals all lost, which are the top three teams in the AFC coming into the season. So the AFC is pretty open, open right now. Wide open, which is what we kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't expect the Chiefs to lose to the Lions on that season opener. I didn't either. And actually, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because we almost skipped over it, you know, just with the weekend. Well, yeah, it was yeah. just the weird timing and everything, but yeah, that was a that was a pretty wild game. It was a wild game. The yeah. Lions, I don't think they're the dark horse anymore. I think they're just kind of up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and to touch on the Chiefs here for a moment, Travis Kelsey being out kind of exposed that Chiefs offense a little yeah. bit, man. I mean, and, and credit to the the, yeah, the Lions defense, man. Yeah, I thought they played a, a pretty good game. Also, I mean, the plan. Chiefs' backup tight end did have some good receptions yeah, and everything. Yeah. It was just like, they fell, fell in, did a good job. yeah, it was almost like it was just kind of neutralized. Though it wasn't really one side one, right? Um, as far as that battle, but then uh, Patty looked a little, I don't want to say rusty at times, just kind of not where he needs to be, which is obviously it's week one. It is, and I think that's a trend league wide. Like, yeah, if you look at quarterbacks. Week one, I mean, mm -hmm. Patty struggled. Obviously, Joe struggled. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I mean, obviously he played well, but didn't get the win, right? So Josh yeah. Allen struggled. So you know, it's it's you know, and like you said last year, Joe struggled. So it's, yeah. it's a trend, right? Early Which, in the year, things offenses settle down. They do. And all those teams have credit, though, crazy good D lines, though, as well. They do. It's the kind of a trend that's happening. Is you got to have a good defensive line in the NFL. Well, I, I, 
ultimately I wanted to get to with Pat. Mm -hmm. How frustrated are you, man? I mean, you're putting balls. He did, you know, look a little. Yeah, the receivers. Times, but the receivers he's did putting look balls. In yeah, the receivers it. look pretty bad. Yeah, Kadarius Tony. Yeah, man. I mean, he has been nice. meme to the ground. Yeah. Um, but that's one game. I mean, let's not write off Tony yet or anything. But yeah. it is, it is tough for him to come back from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and well, I mean, they're going to have to. They got the Jags this week, and that's a, you know, that's a big opponent for the Chiefs. That's yeah. kind of my, the game I'm looking forward to a little, you know, which we'll get more, you know, we'll talk about later on. Yes. But, um, you know, you got to, you got to scrap. I, I like Joe. Joe put it best. Week one is what it is. I mean, you take it, you learn. Yeah, it is what it is. And you move on from you it. On. You can't change anything about it. You just got to. Yeah. And they've been there before last year alone. I mean, yeah. Let's um, just write the ship. Yeah. Do you have any big takeaways from week one? I mean. Uh, yeah. Tyreek kills a dog. Yeah, yeah. The Dolphins are. Their offense is crazy. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, two touchdowns, 200-plus receiving yards. Like, yeah. It was just insane. What do you have for your fantasy team? 45 uh, points? Almost 45 points on my fantasy yeah. team. You hear that, Trey? <laughs> yeah, he'll never watch the game. Oh, no. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Tyreek played great. Um, and Animal 2, 446 passing yards or something like that. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. yeah, that game was a lot of fun, man. The yeah. Chargers back and forth. And then the Dolphins D to step up at the end and kind of put the pressure on Herbert. And I think they took him down for a sack to end the game. Yeah. So, well, not to end the game, but to, you know, change possession. Yeah. 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 And yeah. he looked a little frustrated walking off the field, which, I mean, understandable. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're week one at home. You're not expecting to yeah. take that L. But, and it sucks starting 0 1. Trust yeah. me, I know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That did happen. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, my biggest takeaway from week one, the receivers, man, I, the receivers were nuts. Jay yeah. played great. Tyreek played great. Brandon Ayuk, I mean, just yeah, some of the performances by these receivers were. I mean, even phenomenal. Jacoby Myers had like nine for eighty-one and two touchdowns. Like just a random, not really a random no name, but he's just been kind of shipped around the league yeah. from the Patriots over to I can't remember who he plays for now. Yeah, but I just remember seeing those stats. Um, my next takeaway is, despite the blowouts, the league is shifting again. I think that we're we're going to see a power shift before long, league wide. I think we're going to um, start to see some teams. Well, yeah. Who have, you know, well, one you're already seeing like the Buccaneers kind of shift down where yeah. uh, the Tom Brady leaves. Right. But they did come out with a they win won. week yeah, one. That's what's like crazy Minnesota, because like theoretically they're shifting downward, but yeah. they're one and zero. Yeah. Same with the Jets, 1-0. I mean, they lost Rodgers, but they ended up winning the game after him. Right. And I don't think they were – I mean, what, it was 0-0, zero to zero, right? It was the first drive of the game. I don't think yeah. the Jets started down or anything. Yeah, no, I thought it was 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, but, yeah, I think my biggest takeaway is DNs are OP. Yeah. DNs are a cheat code. Yeah. Micah is an animal. Yeah. Miles Garrett, he's an animal. Nuts. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then TJ was still had some good plays. He forced a fumble. He uh, is now tied with uh, James Harrison, the all-time sack leader. Yeah, he's going to gap him. Yeah. So I mean, what does that? And you know, you know what I think. Of, <laughs> yeah. You know, just James Harrison. So that's amazing. Oh, absolutely. He has little Arizona interception yeah. return. Yeah. What was it? Ninety-nine yards yeah, or one hundred and one or something? Yeah. Took it to the house from the goal line, man. One of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. Um. But no, I mean, just like you said, man, uh, that it makes it puts all the stress in the world on the offense to have it, somebody like a TJ Water, a Miles. But Garrett. it just seems like this year the D lines are just kind of feasting, which I don't know if it's just, again, week one, oh, offensive yeah. lines got to take time to gel. Defensive lines are a little more individualized yeah. roles. Offensive lines, one big unit. Right. So, but man, it just seemed like defenses were dominant. I was, yeah. like, I was just sitting there and I was like, is this going to be how it is this year? Just a defensive league, yeah. or quarterbacks going to figure it out? Right, right. Well, it's also going to um, going to put a little bit of uh, interest on the uh, the running back market going forward too. Absolutely, with with quarterbacks and receivers. You know, not so much receivers, but quarterbacks particularly yeah. struggling early in the year. Mm -hmm. you know, what does that mean for your running backs early? In the well, year? look at your Nick Chubb. I mean, heck, Brees Hall had a heck of a game last night. He right. got, he was the one that. Kept the Jets in it for the most part. Yeah. Um. So these running backs are kind of stepping up this year, and yeah. maybe it does change the market. But I mean, it's week one. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Not, CMC let's not still the guy. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not overreact yet. Um. 
Well, we're going to shift gears here in just a moment to uh, college football. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about the Buckeyes, um, but uh, give us just a moment here, mm -hmm. and we're going to be right back here on the 740 Sports Show. Welcome back, everyone, to the 740 Sports Show. We're going to be switching gears mm -hmm. here, Bub. We're going, to, uh, we're going to switch gears back to Saturdays here. Yes. Talk about uh, a little bit of college football. Yeah, the old traditional football. The traditional football. <laughs> the good old days. Glory football, Bub. Yeah. Yeah. Until Neil came in. I say glory football, and, and you got Deion Sun at midfield flashing his watch at people across. Oh, yeah. But he, hey, he wide. can do that. <laughs> when, you, it's great. when you play ball like that, you can do that. It's great. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously college football, um, once again, provided a lot of fun over the weekend. Um, not necessarily, though, with the highest state football, uh, a, a wing, a convincing win. Over yeah, state. yeah, the score. But the offense still isn't clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. And um, it's just, you, you need to see it happen at some point. You got, what, Western Kentucky this week? So Yeah, yeah Ryan Day did come out today and announce... Um, you know, once again, you got Cal McCord as a starter, yeah. but he gave a little more of a convincing. He's, yeah, more assurance He's our guy going him. forward. Yeah, he doesn't know, have to watch his back at every turn. Right, right. Hopefully that allows him to play a little more relaxed, a little more comfortable. Yeah. Um, just tough right now being a high State guy, man. I mean, yes, we can still, you know, big plays explosive, but at the same time, there's a whole portion of the field we're just not utilizing at all in the pass game at center of the field. I mean, yeah. the intermediate to the – deep ball in the center of the field mm -hmm. doesn't exist right now. And um, usually by week two, we've got that part of it figured out. Yeah, you'd uh, like to see that against Youngstown State. You'd like to think, you know, that you're going to have a few of those, man. Um, Marvin Harrison, though. Yeah, he's still the guy. My Yeah, goodness. he's still good. My goodness. I saw he reached a top speed of over 22 miles an hour. Really? On that, on that touchdown run. He had, a, uh, <laughs> he had a receiving touchdown, and man, he made a heck of an adjustment. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like he had to make a crazy adjustment or everything. It was just the like the quickness and the smoothness of it. Yeah. Was just unreal. Yeah. Yeah. He's obviously the dude. Um, but uh, yeah, Ohio State, uh, not you know, like I said, convincing, but wasn't anything. Yeah. You know, that got the job done. You beat Youngstown by whatever it was, yeah. forty or whatever. Yeah. Now on to Western Kentucky. Western yeah. Western Kentucky this week. So, um, looking forward to that. Uh, that's probably going to be obviously in the game, you know, the the, the slot of games I'm watching this Saturday, I would think. Yeah, there's really not a whole like yeah not great a, amount of games not a to huge watch. Huge lineup of games in college football, and we yeah. agree, but college football is back in the list. Oh yeah, it still takes up your Saturday. It still takes up your Saturday, and uh, and and we'll talk about some of those games here as mm -hmm. well. But Bub, obviously the highlight of the week. Yeah, Bama Alabama. going down. Oh yeah. They were going, going down, down is Texas. awesome. Best twenty dollars I've ever spent on a lost bet, hands down. Yeah, hands down. I lost. I, I did. I took. I, lost some I took money Bama in seven. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, I just didn't think. I didn't think I, Texas would come into that kind of an environment, especially, especially Bama having to like struggle to beat them last year with yeah. Ubers going down. Yeah. I just yeah. felt like Bama was going to be ready to roll over them and everything, but. Yeah. No, Texas kind of had their number from the start and start, didn't let off. Man, it was it was convincing too. I mm -hmm. mean, just everything that Alabama did well, Texas turned around and did twice as good. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, was, their physicality matched Alabama's. Probably outshined Alabama's. Yeah, yeah. Um, the yeah. biggest thing was I think week one, Ewers on twenty yards or deeper passes was like one for seven, and it seemed like he was really finding his rhythm. Yeah, and getting back into the feel of the game. Yeah, that touchdown he dropped in the bucket, man, was nuts. Yeah. I mean that it was a long ball just. Couldn't have been placed any better. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, a ton of pressure on the receiver, but no, the but ball still. placement, man, to just be able to put that ball. There's going to come a time where he has to do that, and he does yeah. it, and it's going to blow everyone. Mm -hmm. That will happen. Yeah. I promise you it will. So it's um, going to be sick. I can't wait. Milro didn't yeah. have his best game. No, no. I think I think that's putting it lightly. Yeah. That that offense just didn't really mm -hmm. overall. That wasn't your game. Alabama offense. Usually they you, you watch Alabama and you see some level of dominance in the run game or some level of dominance in one particular position. Yeah, I mean, they, least, and you just didn't really see it. Yeah, you always just see them have a big offensive line. They have that big tight end that can block. And then yeah. you see kind of them shuffling through running backs. Like right. you have a couple running backs. You always have that receiver like Amari Cooper or something like that. Right. And it just didn't seem like there was really anybody – Kind yeah. of taking that yeah. role. They didn't have that. Get me out of jail free. Yeah. Like, give me. Let me get the ball to Devontae Smith. And exactly. Take it to the house. Didn't mm -hmm. happen. Um, and, it, and that was surprising. But I don't think you obviously write Alabama off, right? No. Uh, 
Provide no, they only Texas, dropped back to 10. Provide Texas with the minor credit. Um, I thought they looked great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, just a huge win for Texas, that program. Um, Quinn Ewers, or... Yeah, Quinn Ewers. He, uh, he is now the... I saw the, the last person to beat uh, Alabama in Tuscaloosa was uh, an OSU transfer to Burrow. Oh, so, yeah. Interesting, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't, you know, the high state, I don't think claims when you were or but, uh, No, no. But, uh, but that, that just sounds like the interest. It is kind of like interest. one of those weird stats that yeah. they throw out there. Yeah. yeah. But it's cool nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another game, Bob, I know you were hyped about Nebraska. Colorado playing their first home game. I was year. hyped about it because I can't stand Nebraska. Oh, no. oh, I no. think they're always overrated. I don't know how they always get overrated, but they yeah. do. It's because of their little stint in the what seventies or eighties, nineties. Ron Dane era is that what you're? Yeah. Oh yeah, when they era. dominated. Yeah, or not. But not. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, help me. I I can. Eric Crouch. Eric Sorry. Crouch. Yeah. Good yeah. Sour Sorry. crowd. It all rhymes together. Um. Anyways. I I got <laughs> what? That's a Tim Couch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That is kind of like a fairly odd pair. Yeah, rubber I'll, grease. I'll Anyways, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> or can we get Bubba away from something? Yeah, college? Colorado. <laughs> I want to talk about Colorado. They are probably the funnest team to watch in college football. Yeah. Um, and they They're handled excited. Nebraska. They kind of started off a little slow, whatever. Yeah. But. Second half, second quarter on, they took (coughs) over. Yeah. And Nebraska, what their coach, uh, the Oregon or the Baylor coach, I went to Uh, Matt Rule. Matt Rule, yes, thank you. He uh, he was kind of critiquing the way Dion was handling things as a coach, and Dion's son, then you know, at the com or press conference or whatever, chirps up at him. Hey, you win, you get talk your talk. Yeah. If you're gonna talk like that to a man, you're gonna have to back it up. So Absolutely. I just think they're such a cool team to watch. Again, I can't talk about Travis Hunter enough. I he, he is so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they win me bets. Fun. Oh, okay. They cool. win me bets. They're cool. pretty much yeah. They don't, okay. Well, they're the only team that really wins me anything. All right, well, so okay. well, they're like I'm that. riding them to the moon. Well, you know Dion. He's not going to let you lose money. No. Coach Brown don't lose money. Bro. Might lose some toes, but not money. Hey, at all costs, Bob. Oh, at he all was. Costs. I would do the same thing. <laughs> I would give all my toes. I don't use them. Yeah. Hey, can you go? They're just toes. They're overrated. They're just toes. I mean, well, turf toe never hurt nobody, right? Well, if you don't have a turf toe, is it really turf toe? No, it's just turf. Yeah. Well, no, it's just like not an injury. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Sometimes yep. they're toes. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, Texas A&M Miami. Um, Texas A&M. <laughs> Fell to Miami. Um, uh, falling yeah. out of the top twenty-five now. Good. I know. Yes, I know that you um, kind of on the Miami train. Maybe not all of them, okay. but you might be on the Miami train. <laughs> Miami is good for like five weeks. Yeah. And then they're not. Yeah. And that's. Yeah. I'm expecting them to go maybe at best eight and four. Yeah. I don't want to give them nine and three. Yeah. So, yeah. but they are fun to watch right now. Yeah. They were very exciting. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Do they have a game this week? Um, looking ahead, I don't know if they play this week or not. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm if sure they do, I'll probably watch them because, I mean, that would be a game. Yeah. Um, my tune-in team right now is Florida State. I don't think. Listen, man. I am in on Florida State. They okay. are physical. They are merciless. Mm-hmm. They've got good play at the quarterback position. They've got a strong receiver. I really like what I'm seeing from Florida State in week one and week two. I think they've got Boston College. Okay, perfect. At Boston College. I don't know why, just growing up, it always felt like there was a game at Boston College every year that yeah. was an upset. It was a trap every yeah, year. Yeah, it was yeah, like Florida was, State or Clemson. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm just like, yeah. and as a kid, I've always just been like, is this the one Boston this, College is going to do? Right, okay, so, so here's what happens, though. Because I, I've been there with you, and then, then it does happen, right? And you're yeah. like, I wish I would have bet. Yeah, I can't, Are, I can't I bet. <laughs> no, no, I'm taking Florida State. I'm not betting on that I, game. I know. Uh-uh. But like, I, that does happen, though, and I know you've had that same yeah. spot in that same, like, oh, man. Well, it's like Boston College just kind of produces, like, this one player that's, 
The, kind of a stud. That has a, a, like a miracle performance. For yeah. One game in his life. Yep. One time a season, and this happens. Mm-hmm. And, and it might be Boston College. It may be Syracuse, but it's going to be one of the two. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it seems like Boston College, man. It was always but they fun. did. Uh, they did look good against LSU. Yeah, Florida yeah. State did. So yeah, um, they got to win. Uh, they got to win in week two against Southern uh, Southern Mississippi as well. And I again, just as convincing. Yeah, I thought. I thought they were. They took care of business. Mm-hmm. I'll put it that way. That's so, all you got to do. If you catch Florida State on, I'm just saying, tune into them. Let us know what you think. Um, yep. But yeah, man, uh, that's that's kind of what happened this week in college football. And mm-hmm. I'm going to touch on something else, Bob. I'm going to take it back. Another day, if I may, for a moment. We started at Sunday. Yes. We took it back to Saturday. I'm going to reel it in one more day if I can. Can I do that for a moment? Bro? Yeah, I was just re- trying to figure out what day you were talking about. <laughs> Friday, Friday is yeah. the day before Saturday. And I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to Coach Hall and the Jackson Ironman. Oh, making yeah. Making a trip to Mount Orem and getting a tough one at Western Brown, man. That was Ironman. a heck of a game. Ironman move on to 3 you know. Yeah, heck 56 of a game. to 48. 56 to 48. Um, a knockdown, drag out game. Cade. Wolford is that. Oh, every time he touched the ball. 24 touches, five mm-hmm. touchdowns. Yep. Uh, the kid ran for 240 yards. I mean. Yeah, ran for four touchdowns and then had a 90 kick or yard kickoff return yeah, for a touchdown. Yeah. I, mean, how st- I mean, unreal what yeah. we're seeing from, from him. And, and just, I mean, just shout out to that Jackson team, man. They're playing hard. They, they took a tough loss at Ironton. They, you know, they bounced back from it. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. tough, man. They got a young team doing this. Man. Oh, absolutely. They didn't have a single returning offensive line, so <laughs> I mean, it's to, hard to do. To, to have that out-of-conference schedule, Yeah. to, to get there, mm-hmm. you know, because we heard, you know, coming into the season, young team, yep. you know, probably a, a rebuild, and they took care of business. You know, mm-hmm. they got Ross Hamilton to wrap up out-of-conference play this week. Yeah. And then it's into, obviously, FAC play. But mm-hmm. um, just regardless of anything else, man, I mean, Congratulations and kudos to that staff and that, those kids for what they've done early in the year. Yeah, no, they're doing really good things over there. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Hopefully, we get to see where the season goes. And... Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Hamilton, uh, Ross Hamilton this week at Jackson, 7.30 kickoff for that game. Mm. Changed uh, as of today, changed yeah. from 7 to 7.30. 7.30 kickoff for that game. Uh, we'll be at Alumni Stadium to oh, okay. you and I, I think. Uh, yeah, so I'll at least for there. now. At least for now. Um, so, uh, so, so we're going to be up there. So good luck this week, uh, to the Jackson Ironman and, uh, get out of the week four and one. Go red. Yeah. Go red. <laughs> um, we're going to take another quick break here and we're going to be right back on the 740 sports show. Welcome back everyone to the 740 sports show here. And we've spent a lot of time up to this point, Bob. Yeah, talking about uh, what what has been and what has happened. I would like to move forward in our lives. Yes. Can we, look can we to look the ahead? future. Can we move on from this weekend? Look to the wrapper, the future. I've lost enough money. <laughs> I've lost enough games. I just want to move on. Yeah, I to want, next week where you can lose more games and more anymore. money. I, I just want to move on from this conversation. Yeah, the future. The wrapper, the future. I, I, I don't think, I think it's just future. I think it's about future. Anyway, um, a lot going on this week, and Bob, uh, we will go ahead and start with uh, the college football yeah. landscape, man. Um, not much lined up in the way of uh, you know overly competitive matchups. Uh, zero games in the top. 25. Yeah, there's no top twenty-five matchups. So uh, but, now you're just kind of looking for upsets. So then you look for upsets. So mm-hmm. we're always trying to figure out a way to you know. To, to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Bob, uh, who do you have, man? Who 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 do you have that might go down a, a non-top 25 team upsetting a top 25 opponent this week? So, I remember looking at it, and I was thinking, number 11, Tennessee, going into Florida. That seems like a tough A game night game, too, 7 o'clock. Okay. Like, yeah. I feel like Florida's just going to be bumping. In the swamp. Tennessee, this is going to be like their first kind of test to see yeah. what they've got going for them and everything. I don't yeah. know how good Florida is. They lost Anthony Richardson. So, I'm not really super sold on Florida, but I think it could be like a nice little, I don't want to call it a trap game because I don't know who Tennessee's looking to play next week, but I think that could be a game to look at for an upset. Yeah, nice. Um, I agree with you. You know, the swamp at nighttime is always rumbling. Um, Mm -hmm. I think think that's a game that, you know, definitely, you know, a a Tennessee with a, you know, younger quarterback. Yeah. You know, going into that environment could struggle. And I think ten or um, Florida was getting like six and a half. Okay. So okay, interesting line there. Too. Yeah. 
interesting line. Um, no, I think that's a good one. I've got Minnesota and UNC. Mm. Um, UNC struggling with Appalachian State. I think Minnesota, uh, just watching a little bit of their game against Nebraska, this is more about UNC to me. Yeah. Um, I just think, Kind of a pretender team? Yeah, a, li- a little bit. You know, yeah. the, the I know coach, their quarterback's pretty highly touted, but I don't really think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just this no. this feels like something to me that you know coming off of that you know we can breathe again mm-hmm. but you can't because you got a Big Ten opponent. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It is a Big Ten opponent at the end of the day, and exactly. exactly. Any Power Five conference opponent is pretty yeah. tough. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've got I've got the uh, UNC potentially going down yeah. to Minnesota. Um, any other games in the college landscape, Bob? You're looking forward to here, man. Uh, I think. I mean, we talked about Florida State and Boston College a little bit. Yeah, that's a noon start. I'll uh, probably kick the day off with that one. Yeah, so. that's probably one of the better games to watch at noon. Yeah. Anything yeah. could happen at that. I expect Florida State to kind of just come in there and, you know, do what they need to do. Yeah. But still, kind of a sketchy game, nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, anyone else you go to later in the day? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i going to watch Ohio State at 4 o'clock. Yeah. I don't really care about them versus Western Kentucky. Well. I'll probably watch a half. Try to get something else at five o'clock or six o'clock. I don't really know what games are on at that time, but right. I'm sure I can find something better than that game. Yeah. Well, um, if nothing else, you'll you'll have a decent um, you'll have a decent night game, Wyoming and Texas, and at least you'll have an opportunity to look at that Texas offense again. Yeah, you know, Texas coming off that big win. Yeah. See if they can keep it rolling. Just let Wyoming come into town and kick them on out. That place is going to be nuts. Too. Yeah, I know it's only Wyoming. I'm not. Saying, yeah, but it's still but like eight o'clock of a game. Big win. Yeah, in Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. Now you get the prime time game. That yeah. place is going. Well, heck, I mean, you just wrong. seen what Colorado did with TCU and kind of how much that built their program. Um, speaking of building programs, there was a running back from Texas. I saw after their win against Alabama, mm-hmm. go up to the recruits visiting Alabama. Instead, come to Texas. Oh, dang. Come to Texas. Dang, yeah. Doing. I come mean, if you Texas. want to sell it, there it is. I mean, that Matthew McConaughey, man, that's enough to, you know, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> were you watching the McAfee cast? I was, that man. Game? It was great. I was, too, and I was like, I kind of want to turn it off, but I thought that was just what it was streaming on, so yeah. that's what I was watching. But... You didn't like it? No, I did like it until they brought in the SEC commissioner. Oh, okay. Yeah, I... I that too, was whenever I was out. I didn't guy, want I the SEC commissioner on yeah. there. I don't but, give a crap. But I could, I could you know, Matthew McConaughey. We're cool with Matthew McConaughey. I like Matthew I like McConaughey, Matthew yeah. Sure, Anytime, I mean, I like how he interacts with college football. He's just another fan yeah. at the end of the day. He, yeah. And you can just see how much he loves it on the field when he's there. He's yeah. he's interactive with all the fans and everything. He's just yeah. another dude on the field. Yeah, yeah. So Super I do cool. like seeing Matthew McConaughey on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll probably tune into that one in the evening. Mm-hmm. And then... Maybe call it an early night. Not sure what's going on on the West Coast that night yet. We'll have mm. to dive into that. But yeah, we got NFL Sunday the yeah. very next day, bub. Yeah, you know that we are looking forward to a little bit of redemption. That's an understatement. Uh, yeah, it is. It I'm is. just trying to like Undertaker hand out of the grave yeah. when he gets buried alive. That's me right now. Yeah. yeah, like I'm just trying to find some air. Okay, so um. Air doesn't exist right now because uh, Baltimore's coming into Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland is coming into Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, Baltimore coming into Cincinnati. JK. Yeah. Torn Achilles. Yeah. yeah. It's just... Or Achilles, right? Yeah, it's Achilles for JK. Yeah, God yeah. dang. Dude, it's just like he can't catch a break. And then no. I unfortunately think it's going to be kind of the end of his running back career mm. as far as... I mean, any hopes of getting a kind of a longer-term deal or anything like that, he's going to have yeah. to have... You know, significant comeback from that. Yeah. That's um, tough. But tough. that being said, I think that hinders the Ravens' offense a good bit. It does. Their backup had two touchdowns, nothing crazy or anything. I think there were just like a few yeah. eight yard touchdown, maybe, and a two yard touchdown. Yeah. So, but I think the Bengals come in and right the ship. I think they get Joe back to where he wants to be. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Yeah. So I think the Bengals come. Get the win there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to have the same report for Pittsburgh. But we're dealing with Cleveland. Yeah, and that defense was buzzing. Yeah. And you want to hear something else. 
Um, first of all, before I say this, do you have a, is, is Amari Cooper? Did he come back? Did he finish? Is he? I mean, he. he I seemed like he was back in the game okay, and everything. I couldn't remember. I saw he was down. Yeah, that and, and slip. Yeah, and, and I, before I make this statement, I want to. First I believe he is in, but I'm not sure. Deshaun Watson looks okay to me. And listen, I, he wasn't convincing. I'm. I as a Pittsburgh. He looked fan, all right. I as a Pittsburgh fan, he looked comfortable. That's the only thing I care about from Deshaun Watson because yeah. I know what he's capable of when he is comfortable. Yeah. So, I'm, you know. But, but I also did see him on uncomfortable. I and did he too. did not look the best whenever he was yes. getting pressured. Yes. So, um, obviously, Pittsburgh is going to bring pressure against Cleveland. Yeah, and they've been comfortable. But uh, that defense, man, I don't know. I don't know, Bob. Mm -hmm. If Pittsburgh's going to pull it off, if we're going to really do this thing, I mean, you're gonna have to open the offense up. It's gotta happen. The offense has to spread itself yep. out. Yep, and you gotta out. use the Browns' aggressiveness against them. Yeah, which is actually kind of Matt Cannon's <clears throat> thing. Like, yeah, you know, is, is you know, quick hitters, quick, quick hitters, and then screens. finally catch them off guard. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm not gonna, you know, it's a home game. Yeah, that's a great thing for Pittsburgh. It's a home game. You're coming off of a. A very, very, very good, maybe Brock Purdy's best NFL performance. Yeah, I mean, it was very good for and, him. And maybe maybe the best, arguably the best team in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, and we they were definitely a top and team coming won. into it, and they, they dominated. Yeah. A, a Steelers team that I know a lot of people are decently high on. Yeah. So that makes me feel a little bit better as well, because now yeah. you're seeing a Cleveland team that you seem to have their number yeah, no, exactly. History. So, and I think that's just kind of the thing, dude. Teams have team numbers. I'm just not as convinced. I'm just not as convinced that we get it done, Bob. I'm yep. just not. I'm going Cleveland. Cleveland wins by a field goal. I think it's that type of game. Like, yeah. I really do. I think we play That's a very than, AFC game to win by I, a field goal I, I think, or AFC North. I think we play better. You know, it might not. It, it's a field goal late. Might be one, might be two, might be three. Yeah. But it's, it's that type of game. I think it comes down to that at the end. Yep. And I'm just hoping that Pittsburgh can find themselves on the right side of it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, to shift gears on you though, the Chiefs and the Jags. Yeah. Are uh, th that's a game I'm certainly going to tune into, man. Well, yeah, the Chiefs just signed their defensive lineman back, yes. Chris Jones, yeah, incentive-based contract, which is just kind of weird to me that you hold out and then you still take an incentive-based contract. But yeah. I, I, I don't know the breakdown of it, so sure. yeah. I'm sure he's happy with it. So I, yeah. I, I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's good with it. And um, you and I are both going to work tomorrow. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So we got to care what yeah. we think. So, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, that 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 is an intriguing game. It'd be interesting mm -hmm. to see how what his presence on that defense, especially the Chiefs having to go all the way to Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence looking good. Yep, yep. Calvin Ridley kind of kind welcoming of. himself back into the league. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that I think that game is going to be a lot of fun mm -hmm. to watch. Um, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And tough uh, to bet on. Would be a tough one to bet on. As a, another tough one to bet on, Bob Indianapolis. At Houston. Battle of the rookies. The battle of the rookie QBs. Here. If Richardson's playing. I know yeah. he had a knee contusion or bruise. I mean, yeah. I think it's a contusion. Yeah. I think they're the same thing, but they said bruise. Mine was more professional. Um, but I'm hopefully he plays. Reporting no. Injury reporting from both of you, man. Yeah. Well, you take what you can get. All right. Um, anyways, I think Stroud versus Richardson would be a cool matchup. The yeah. Colts looked pretty good in their season opener. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know who they played. Yeah, Can't remember. Um, dude, probably the Jags. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly what I'm thinking. I think it was. Oh, God dang it. Yeah, I But no, I, they looked better than what I thought they were going to. I remember that being a close game. Yeah. And it, and it being competitive throughout. Um, and I was keeping an eye on that score. So, yeah. I mean, ultimately it was, you know. It'll be a cool game just to see two rookie quarterbacks. Kind of reminds me of uh, – RG3 versus Andrew Luck. Obviously, they're not the two calibers or anything. Right. I just liked having those two quarterbacks come in. Yeah. And you obviously knew that they were going to be the guys that were going to be competing for a little bit. Right. And then both their careers get cut short. So, um, let's just uh, let's just assume that this this gets done, man. What, who, who are you taking in this one? Indy at Houston. I'm going to go with Houston. I'll take Indy in this one. You think so? I will. I like, I like Houston at home. I like Houston at home, but I like that offensive line. Okay. Yeah, no, I love I like Indy's offensive, offensive line. line. So I'm gonna rock with that offensive line. Yeah, the Quentin Nelson's a beast. Yeah, yeah. So um, this will be the this will be the one that you and I differ on for the week here, Bob. 
Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I mean, bum. looking ahead, do mm-hmm. you have anything else? I've got some exciting news if you don't. Okay, share it. I've Spill got the tea. News for you. Got an email from the FedEx. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Say, hey, your PSA order mm-hmm. is inbound. So we are expecting our first PSA order any day now. It's obviously mm-hmm. been some of our favorite cards. Yeah. We're stoked. Yes, it's going to be awesome stoked. to open them up. Yeah. Um, some of your top cards mm-hmm. um, you're, you're really looking forward to. Yep. Uh, the Joe Orange Phoenix Laser Prism. Yeah, that's going to be a cool one to get yeah. back. Yeah, uh, the rookie so Chad Johnson that's was a cool one. card. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I've got some LeBron stuff in the order. We've mm-hmm. got all kinds of other. Oh, there's a bunch all of it. All kinds of other fun stuff, man. This is this is this is going to be a fun one. So we are going to be making um, a separate video on that. Yep. Um, we're pretty much going to drop everything at, at whatever time. And, yeah, that's you know, pretty so much going to be a keeping eye must out. Do. Keep an eye out because that video may be upon you sooner rather mm-hmm. than later. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, Bob, if you don't have anything else, we're calling it a night. No. I mean, I don't. Oh. can't think of anything. I'm still trying to think of who the Jaguars played. All right. Well, hey, the Jaguars played the AI robots at SoFi Stadium. That's who they played. Did you see the AI robots, Bob? Did they play the Panthers? You are a truly uncultured swine. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> That's going to be it for this episode of the 7-4 Sports Show. Be sure to do it again.